Alrighty, welcome to another three on three cube draft. <clears throat> As is now the current standard for a three on three, we open four packs, 12 cards each, more action, you know. It's myself, Juju Bean, and Xantos, squad ringers against Mac the Knife, Slacks, and a Wombat. Hopefully, not Rabbit. All right, let's see how this goes. We've got eh, a pretty medium pack. <clears throat> There's Dark Ritual and Arid Mesa. Pentan Prism, Sail to the West. These are all cards I'm not that happy to first pick. I'm going to take the Arid Mesa. First picking a fetch land is kind of like, it's kind of like picking a good common in a normal draft where you don't want to open a your pack and pick one pack one a good common. You want to take like a good uncommon or rare, but you get a good common. You're not super disappointed. So I'm going to take Arid Mesa. I assume Ritual, Skydiver, Wandering Emperor, Prism will be gone. Maybe Sail into the West. I don't know. Ooh, Beseech the Mirror. That's a new addition. We're playing Frog's Cube here. Coveted Jewel as well. This pack has Shieldred, Marsh Flats, Library of Alexandria. I think I'm just going to take Shieldred here. Plus, if I wheel Beseech, I could Beseech for Shieldred, which is pretty nice. And Slacks must have opened something pretty good because Shieldred's pretty good. Library is all right. I would take Fetchland over Library. I would probably take Library third out of this pack, but... I'm probably passing Wombat after passing a pack full of garbage. Unfortunately, Dark Ritual. Though if Wombat takes Dark Ritual and then I take Shieldred, that's not that bad for me either. Marsh Flats, Library, Time Warp, Zagoth Triome. Yeah, I might get... I'm pretty good chance of getting Beseech or Coveted Jewel back. We'll, we'll see which one we're more likely to play. This pack has Timeless Dragon is a nice one too. Plane Cycling for two mana and Eternalize you can just for four mana. So you get a nice little card advantage dragon there. There's also Life Death, which is solid with Shieldred. There's also Chandra Torture Defiance as just like a very solid red card. And Fatal Push, which I think is decent. I have a red-white fetch, so taking Chandra is not crazy. Taking Timeless Dragon is not crazy either. I mean, I think that card is pretty good. Hmm. Not a like exciting third pick, honestly, but do I want to take Life Death as a mediocre reanimate? A good red card or a good white card. I don't think I want to take Fatal Push. I don't think that's quite strong enough to take here. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards just taking Chandra. Red-black is pretty nice. All right, now I could just take Scrubland here. Makes Arid Mesa into black. Also, I could just be like Mardu Value or something like that. I don't think I want to take Splinter Twin or World Spine Worm. There's a bunch of white cards which are decent, but I think I'd rather just take Scrubland to start with. Now there's Bayou. I don't mind black duels, but there's also just Concealing Curtains. And Concealing Curtains is very good in this kind of strategy. Also, it gives me a nice little three drop. Well, one drop slash three drop. Oh, and then K Command. Yeah, I'll take K Command. I'll just be black, red, mid range. I like it. There is an iteration here, but we're pretty far away from that. And K Command is really strong in this kind of deck. Passing Iteration, Kaito, Urtai Resurrected. So two good blue black cards. Let's see what comes back here. I would like to pick up a draw seven if I can, just because that is really good with Shieldred. Memory Jar, Wheel of Fortune are both good. Sail into the West came back. So did Gaunty. So did City of Traitors. Hmm. <clears throat> Pentad Prism didn't wheel. Neither did Dark Ritual. Not surprised by either of those things. I think this is close because Gaunty's solid, but you know, taking another four drop when I already have two isn't ideal, though it is good in this kind of deck. City of Traders is pretty solid with both of these cards. It's actually not even terrible with Concealing Curtains. Sail into the West being blue-green isn't really what I'm looking for. All right. Beseech came back. Oh, so did Time Warp. So did Zagoth Triome. There's also Bloodthirsty Adversary, which is pretty nice with K-Command. This doesn't look like a Beseech deck. I actually think I'm going to take the Bloodthirsty Adversary. It feels like I have a pretty good lane into Black Red here. And uh, Adversary working with K-Command, and this deck's going to look to pick up Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt, that kind of thing. Mm, Voldaren Thrill Seeker actually seems like it fits nicely. It's 3 mana for a 1-1, one, one, which is really a 3-3, three, three, and you can sack a creature to deal damage equal to its power to any target. You can sack this creature or whatever you put the counters on that turn. But it might actually still take Timeless Dragon. I have Scrubland already. It's a pretty nice little value card. All right, yeah, let's, let's let's try that. I think that fits a little better than the Thrill Seeker. This deck doesn't seem quite aggressive enough 
the, the way these decks end up, they want good sources of damage and Thrill Seeker would be fine. But the upside on Dragon with Scrubland and Arid Mesa seems pretty decent. Passing a lot of green here to Wombat, so I've got to keep that in mind. And, but I'm not too worried about that. And could just be Mar a Mardu deck. Fatal Push got taken. There's other Black Drafters. That's fine, though. Could use Cheap Removal. That's something that is going to be important for this style of deck. This is kind of like a two-drop cycler. And could use I mean, a Black Red Land at some point, of course. And Thraven Inspector and Flicker Wisp. Huh. They're both pretty good. I think I like Thraven Inspector more as a card, especially since it's cheap. Uh, I'll take the Bargain. Bargain Shielder is actually a really nice combo. I'll take Sulfuric Vortex. Ah, there's a lot of directions I could go here, honestly. Could be Mardu Midrange. Could be like a red-based aggro deck. Could be white red. I'm probably not gonna leave Shieldred, Concealing Curtains, and Colagon's Command behind, but we'll have to see. Another really mediocre pack. I guess I just take Windswept Teeth. I already have Scrubland. I'm already gonna be on the lookout for a red white land. I could hate Brain Freeze. I don't really think I'm supposed to do that. I don't know enough about what Jesse's got going. Also, Jesse passed a late sail into the West in Time Warp, which are good cards in Brain Freeze style decks. So let's just take Windswept Teeth. Probably just take Scalding Tarn now. There's also, there's Skyclave Apparition at double white. There's Recurring Nightmare, but we're, we're not that great of a Recurring Nightmare deck. I don't want to exhume. Yeah, I'm just going to take Scalding Tarn. And be on the lookout for some duels here. Because if I, if I can take these fetches, I could also just play a bunch of different colors. Like... I think a decent card's going to wheel out of this pack because all these cards are fine. So I'm just not that worried. Uh, and then here I just take Blood Crypt probably because Blood Crypt makes Mesa into red black. Currently Mesa is red or black, so that's fine. But it makes Scalding Tarn into red black, which is nice. And Watery Grave is a lot less good. I think Blood Crypt is important enough that I'll take it over a braid. And then maybe wheel Black Cleave Cliffs or Brain Maggot, one of those cards. Really could use some cheap removal here, especially since my first three picks this pack were all lands. <laughs> I just haven't seen cards that are awesome, so I'd rather just take good lands and then figure out the cards later. Like, I'm not that far away from being able to play green or blue cards if I really want to also. I've got a blue-red and a white-green fetches. So, it, like if I get a Minsk and Boo in a later pack... Or maybe even a Leovold is potential. We'll see. We will see. And <laughs> Sulfuric Vortex and uh, Yawgmoth's Bargain don't go in quite the same place. All right, so here I won't take a land, despite there being both Badlands and Ragrin Triumph. Here I just take Parallax Wave. Parallax Wave is a really nice card. And part of the reason to take lands highly is to cast good spells like Parallax Wave. Plus... What's going to get taken? There's one, two, three, four, five, six cards that are good, and I think both artifacts will get taken, so I think I might even get a land back out of this pack. Hmm. Archfiend of the Dross is interesting. Four mana, six, six flyer. It has four oil counters, and then at the end of the four oil counters that get removed every upkeep, you lose if this is still in play, but you can probably kill them pretty fast, and whenever they... One of their creatures dies, they lose two life. There's also Bitter Reunion, but this doesn't seem like a great Bitter Reunion deck. It's actually not a terrible Blossoming Tortoise deck because I have a bunch of fetch lands, but I think I think I can see Archfiend being good here. I don't know. And this pack has mostly junk. There's like an Emrakul and a Portal to Phyrexia, neither of which I'm really that well equipped to do anything with. There's also a Consider, but that's like one of the weakest fetches. I don't care about Waterlog Grove. I'm just going to take the Emrakul just in case now i could take ulamog and then i'd be on the lookout for sneak stuff i could also take life from the loam i have three fetch lands already loam plus fetch lands is pretty strong and then maybe i pick up like a wasteland or something yeah that seems that seems plausible okay so recurring nightmare came back so did up the beanstalks or hydro crisis i think i'll take recurring nightmare Feels like I have the outs to be a good recurring nightmare deck. 
I could cycle Timeless Dragon and recur it into play. Yeah, Black Cleave Cliffs came back, which I think I will take over Terra Sunder. I'm not. Terra Sunder's fine, but I'm not that concerned about it. Loam could be interesting when you dredge it to mill cards for Recurring Nightmare. That's something. All right, let's see this pack, which of the lands came back. So Badlands and Celestial Colonnade. I think I should just take Badlands. I think Colonnade is good, but I don't have any blue cards. In fact, I have all the colors but that, so. This seems fine. Sure, I'll take Blossoming Tortoise. Maybe we end up doing that. I don't think we're going to play Draga Tree Speaker really under any circumstances. Oh, last pick Sakura Tri Builder. Okay. All right. Definitely could go into green. Could use some good cards here. Huh. Demonic Tutor is at least a strong card. And there's both him and Dothy Voidwalker, so I'm almost assuredly going to get one of those two back because I think Subtlety, Elite Spellbinder, Prismari Commander are pretty tempting. So is Thief. And it's just how many people are at the table that can play a double black early card. But I will take Demonic Tutor for sure. It just makes basically all the plans a lot better. This pack. Yeah, also pretty weak. I'm not, I'm really not loving how these packs have gone. Uh, I might just take Remand. It's not even that good. But the, the problem is I don't really want to take a Thundermaw Hellkite here. Taking... Chupacabra is a card that could be good in this deck, especially if I play Recurring Nightmare. It's also good with Parallax Wave. So is Lingering Souls, but I don't really want to second pick one of those. There's also Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library is a pretty strong card, especially with all these fetches. Maybe I just get Sakura Tribe Elder in there. Maybe Blossoming Tortoise. Yeah, and then I'll, then I'll Sylvan. All right. Let's, let's do that. And it doesn't add another color, which is kind of nice. And... What is up with these packs? I guess I could take On Thin Ice as a removal spell. Maybe the City of Traders ends up not making the cut. I'll have enough Snowlands here. All right. I just don't see myself playing like... I could see myself playing Crop Rotation if I get Strip Mine, but I'm pretty far from that. I don't have a Strip Mine yet. I don't really want to count on getting past that or opening it in the last pack. Let's just take On Thin Ice here. I don't care about Figure of Destiny too much. I've got enough Red Black Lands, though I will take Bloodstain Mire here. Okay, now the loam is looking really good. Passing a Palantir and a Memory Lapse and a Nissa, yeah, that's fine. Gristlebrand versus Grave Titan versus like Firebolt slash Third Path Iconoclast. I could take Gristlebrand and then I'd have not only a creature to Recurring Nightmare back if I get some discard outlets, but also a creature to sneak into play. And that is a late Gristle brand. So I don't know if I'm going to get to play it, but we'll see. I also have Demonic Tutor. It just makes any sort of combo like that so much easier. Right now, I haven't seen any red except for the K command, which I can splash. An adversary, which is looking kind of grim. And a Chandra that I took early. So I have all these red black lands. So I guess I'll probably play the Chandra at least. But this is a weird looking deck so far. Oh, this looks like a pretty good Titania deck with all these lands. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just move into green. We'll play Blossoming Tortoise. We'll take Titania over Moss Wood Dread Knight. Dothy Voidwalker did indeed come back, and I will take it over Bone Shards. Bone Shards is a good discard outlet, but Dothy Voidwalker is such a messed up card that I am just going to take it. All right, so I'm like four color, no blue. have pretty good lands for it. Could use like another duel to, to go get. I have Timeless Dragon, like a white, a white red duel or a white green duel would both be decent. Oh, so all the cards I was looking at wield. So I am kind of in the right place. It's just the packs are being really bad for me, it looks like. I kind of don't want another four drop and Lingering Souls, I can mill it with Blossoming Tortoise or Life from the Loam. That seems kind of nice. I like Taiga too, or Stomping Ground, but... I don't think I'm supposed to take that there. All right, I'll take Lava Claw now. That's fine. And I think I'll take Nissa over Damnation. I've got a lot of removal. Okay. This deck's like a little scattered, but it's got the mana to, I think, play play fine. I do... that. The Taiga was a big loss, you know, m missing Stomping Ground, but I have one more pack. I feel like I can get there. All right, I'll take the Black-White... 
land. Take a Fauna Shaman that I'm not going to play. All right. One good card. Well, Brain Freeze is gone, and I passed it the other direction. No, I passed it to Slacks, also in pack two. Ugh. This pack is horrendous for me. Um, I guess I could take Noble Hierarch. It would be good in this deck. Do I do I just hate the Breach? I, I really hate doing that. Because it's I couldn't even play Breach in this deck. It doesn't do anything. Without Brain Freeze, Breach is pretty medium. And it's not like I have a bunch of draw sevens or cantrips anyway. But if I pass, I'm not getting Noble back or Othari back. I guess Snapcaster or Seed Shark. How bad is it to pass the Breach versus how good is it to take Noble? Noble is pretty good. It's really good with Recurring Nightmare. Whatever, I'm just going to take the Noble Hierarch. It's a miserable first pick, but what can you do? Uh, Time Twister, huh? What does that do for me? It's good with Shieldred. That's about it. It'd be an extra color. I don't really want to do that. I might just take Temple Garden, pass True Name and Time Twister. Temple Garden makes Mesa into green and makes Timeless Dragon into green, which is nice. Oh, Temple Garden might wheel, though. There's also Plateau, which I wouldn't hate. I could also just take the Time Twister. Like, I have a Scalding Tarn. I could pick up another land. Oh, you know, this is not a bad survival deck. Oh, I actually would play survival in this deck, which is great, because that means the survival is probably going to wheel. So I think I'll take the white green land and count on survival wheeling. And then now I could just grief. Yeah, grief is good with recurring nightmare. It's also a great card. So let's just take that. Let's just pick four. Uh, not an oath deck, not a pestermite deck. Could be an unburial rights deck. That's another one that's not terrible in this sort of style of deck. And it, I can dredge it with Loam or Blossoming Tortoise. All right, let's go in Burial Rites here. And now there's Shallow Grave, which would be another good combo with Survival, and it would make the Emrakul a potential playable. It's a shame passing on Memory Jar with the Shieldred, but I think the Shallow Grave is a nice pickup. And then I could Custody Lich. I could also play Charming Scoundrel as a discard outlet. Discard a card to draw a card, or make a treasure, or make a wicked roll, which you're not really that likely to do. I think that having this with Recurring Nightmare is pretty nice. Okay, Gristlebrand, Emrakul are getting in. Fauna Shaman might get in. Don't want Bargain, don't want that. Maybe you want City of Traders. I'm not sure about that one yet. And... Chandra is a little dicey here, but I think I might be able to pull it off. Archfiend of the Dross does not seem good. I have 11 lands already, so I'm only a couple cards over despite having a million cards here. Timeless Dragon is there. Mm, makeshift Mannequin versus just a complete off-color Gitaxian Probe. Mannequin's okay. I don't know if I'll play it, but eh, maybe I should have just hated the Probe. Mannequin is okay. I'll take Nissa out probably. All right, survival did wheel. It is important that this deck has it. I need to cut three cards. Um, yeah, I guess I can probably cut the Chandra. It just doesn't really fit in this deck's game plan. I kind of want to just cut either Concealing Curtains or Fauna Shaman. I think I'll cut the Curtains. And I don't really want to cut any more creatures if I can avoid it. Let's see. This is 16 lands. I mean, I guess I could cut on thin ice, potentially. I think I like the K command. And Loam actually seems fine in this deck. I even have a silent clearing to get back if I want. Also, just self-milling is not terrible. Though you can flip Emrakul and reshuffle, but that's okay. I think Fauna Shaman's good enough. This deck is... Uh, it's something. Not a fast deck. The Grief is really going to have to do some heavy lifting. Just didn't... My first picks were all fetch, like Fetchland, Fetchland, Demonic Tutor, and I don't even know. Oh, Noble Hierarch. Just really weak first picks. But yeah, that's what happens. Oh, Zeotora's Proven Ground is excellent. So I'll take that over removal. Now all my fetches get, do everything I want. Okay, that was a pretty nice... Might as well just hate the Pestermite and pass two random green cards. And 
Oh, this deck actually might Questing Beast. It's not going to Soul Herder. her. Okay. This card, this deck needs to cut two. Nah, that shouldn't be too hard. 12 lands, 37 cards. We'll, we'll take a look and see what, what our last two are. Probably Questing Beast is one of them. I might side that in. Not non-blue survival. Okay, so let's take a look here. This deck's not as good as this last deck. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Okay, so this deck, I need to get a Blossoming Tortoise, that's fine. It's got these two to bring back with Unburial Rites, Recurring Nightmare, and Shallow Grave. Shallow Grave works with Emrakul. Emrakul does not work with anything but Shallow Grave, though I could also put in the Makeshift Mannequin. It might be fine to do that. How many discard outlets? I have Charming Scoundrel, Fauna Shaman, Survival, and then also Dredging on Loam or Milling on Blossoming Tortoise. Yeah. Let's definitely take out Questing Beast. I think Titania with all the fetches is good enough. It's five mana for a 5-3 that puts a land in a 5-3 into play. That's pretty good. Good with Recurring Nightmare too. I don't want to take out Fauna Shaman. Oh, I should just take out Onthan Ice. I have so few snow lands in my deck. I'm going to have one, two, three, four. I'm going to have like seven snow lands because I'm putting in... Yeah, I mean, seven's not that bad. Let's go one, two forests, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green sources. I almost want like a third forest because I have Sakura Tribe Elder and Noble. And then I put in a mountain, a swamp, and a plains. Oh, and that leaves me one over. Mm -hmm. Like I think I feel like I have enough sources. I guess I could probably get one forest out. I'll put it in the sideboard in case I need it. So for swamps, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve black sources. Okay, one swamp is fine. Plains, I have one. Two, three, four, five, six. No, that doesn't do it. Six, seven white plus timeless dragon. Yeah, that's plenty even for a double white card. Red, I should have one off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and then this, that that is enough green, I think. Just to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight green sources plus Timeless Dragon. It wouldn't be crazy, honestly, to take out Black Cleave Cliffs and just put in another forest. Like, I think that's fine. I've got so many... I don't need that many red sources. I ended up not being that heavy in red. I do need to cut a card still, though. <laughs> the other option is to play 16 land, because I have Noble, Thraben, uh, and Timeless Dragon, and Sylvan... Life from the Loam, Sakura Tribe Builder. Is that reasonable? Yeah, that doesn't seem unreasonable. End up cutting that forest after all. Okay. We'll see how this deck does. I, I don't think this deck is great. I think it has the possibility of having some okay draws, but I don't think this deck is particularly good, and I'm going to lean pretty hard on just like... I mean, technically, I can I can have like some pretty fast Shallow Grave Emrakuls. Maybe I'll get some of those, or... Or I'll just grief on turn one and then recurring nightmare back on turn three. Like turn one, land noble, grief you. Turn two, recurring nightmare, get back grief. Like that'll win the games pretty easily. Excited to get Blossom Tortoise onto the field though. That should be fun too. Let's see how this goes. Alrighty, time for round one against Slacks, public enemy number one. Uh, I will keep this hand. This hand's actually pretty interesting. We'll see what I end up doing with this shallow grave slash grief. I'm gonna play Proven Ground. I don't think I don't think I wanna pitch Grief for Shallow Grave here against a blue deck. What I wanna do is play Oh, Fauna Shaman. And set up a 
probably Shallow Grave Gristle Brand. Didn't play a land on turn two. It's Force of Will, Pitching to Fairy, sure. I also might just cast Grief in a turn or so. Oh, Recurring Nightmare. That gives me a completely different plan. All right. Cast this, Exiling Shallow Grave. Grief in your hand is Minsk and Boo, Up the Beanstalk, Talisman. I just take Talisman here. And then go just cast Recurring Nightmare, spend my mana, pass the turn. If you don't draw land this turn, you're pretty boned. Mox Opal. Yeah, you got to play that because they're about to get about to get griefed hard. Let's go Thraben over Lingering Souls, I think, because I want to go Recurring Nightmare, get griefed back, sack Thraben. Would have would have liked to draw land there, but I think we're doing just fine. All right, let's dismiss those. Here, I don't care about hanger back. Not taking Echo Vans. I guess I'll just take up the Beanstalk. And I think I'm just gonna crack the clue to try to draw a land. All right, play this and then crack this, get tapped Blood Crypt. Pass. And obviously Jesse being stuck on one land is a big part. Ooh, an Astrolabe, that was a good draw. Oh, Cycling Oliphant, also a decent draw. All right, let, him being stuck on lands obviously helps quite a bit here, but I think that uh, this is a pretty nice little cycle anyway. Now I can loam this back. Tarn, I have two, two targets left. Then play Recurring Nightmare here. And Recurring Nightmare back. Actually, I can just wait on the Thraven Inspector. I don't really need to do it quite yet. Another island, and you're gonna play a blister hanger back here. Hanger beezy, sure. Minsk and Boo is gonna be going down in a second here, though. Do I dredge loam? So my main concern with dredging loam is if I hit exactly Emrakul, it's pretty awkward. Because then I don't have a creature in my graveyard for loam. So let's or for recurring nightmares. So let's not do that. Well, I, w I don't have any targets left for Scalding Tarn, so there's that as well. <laughs> Three cards in hand, Hangerback, or sorry, Walking Ballista, Ballista, Minsk and Boo, and Echo of Eons. Let's go Recurring Nightmare back. Now I get back the Fauna Shaman, Sacking Grief. Uh, play a land, cast Lingering Souls, and then Recurring Nightmare back the Grief again. And then next turn, if I draw a creature, take Minsk and Boo here, I get to Fauna Shaman it away, and then maybe set up a Recurring Nightmare for that. But either way, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I also have K Command, so yeah. All right, that was a nice, a nice take advantage of your one land Gitaxian Probe start. And uh, on to game two here. Okay. Mm, I already have all my like anti-artifact stuff in. There's concealing curtains, which might be good, but I kind of like where we're at. Let's battle. All right, on the draw here. <laughs> oh, this has grief recurring nightmare again, and this time with a K command to pitch. <laughs> he gets to see it coming. This time I am going to grief on turn one, pitching K command and play turn one Thraben, turn two crack the clue, and then turn three recurring nightmare. Sensei's top is good against grief. Let's play the planes. Play this exile and K command. All right. But I'm still going to do this. Uh, huh. Mindstone versus Hanger Back Walker. I don't care about Hanger Back Walker. I'm going to take Mindstone. I could also take Coveted Jewel, but that seems like a mistake given how expensive that card is. So let's just play Thraben. He's going to play a Hanger Back this turn, I would assume. Off Snow Covered Mountain. And I'm not going to get to grief a ton of cards out of hand here because. He's just going to not have very many spells, especially if he drew a spell this turn or a land this turn. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll send for one. Why not? I think there's a pretty good chance he's just going to tap the hanger back on his next turn like he might upkeep top here. Oh, didn't upkeep top, so might have drawn us a, a play. 
Oh, is that a pentad prism? Okay. I'm not that worried about the coveted jewel because I can probably set it up to steal it. I do need to draw lands. All right, well, that is lands. I am gonna, I am still gonna get rid of the coveted jewel. There's just no reason to let him have that card. Grief you, get coveted jewel, pass the turn. The reason I didn't care too much about Hangerback is Parallax Wave wipes out Hangerback really nicely. So didn't top upkeep. Wanted to keep all the mana up in case you drew like a five drop or whatever. Gonna play Celestial Colonnade most likely. And, oh, not Colonnade. Interesting, so your last card's Colonnade. You're gonna tap top to draw? No. Okay, we're going to V-click upkeep here. That's annoying because Parallax Wave was going to be pretty good here. But, yeah, this still could be okay. He could also not take Parallax Wave, but it seems pretty risky. Oh, he took Recurring Nightmare. Sure. I guess let's go Sylvan Library. Uh, play Zeotora's Proving Ground here and hit for three. Hmm. I, I guess I'm happier this way. It didn't seem like the Recurring Nightmare was going to do too much anymore. At least not with Grief. Maybe Recurring Nightmare Titania would have gone pretty hard. I'm going to hope to find a fetch land this turn. Hopefully one that can get Temple Garden. Because I'm taking some damage. All right, let's draw Makeshift Mannequin. Not too exciting. And Burial Rites Fauna Shaman. Interesting. Ah, I didn't find white mana. Oh, that is really annoying. Um, I think... Hmm. I'm at 11. I could just take Fauna Shaman. I don't really want to take 4 damage here. That seems like an unnecessary risk. Especially since the Colonnades attack me. I'd just die. I could take Fauna Shaman. And that gives me a reshuffle on upkeep. Yeah, I guess that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And I think I just play Lava Claw on, I'm going to stop on Upkeep. And I don't really want to attack Hanger back because I need to get this Parallax Wave out anyway. All right. I get to see three new cards for a white source here. <laughs> I'm actually one short, unfortunately, of uh, using Fauna Shaman to get Timeless Dragon and cycling that. I assume I'm getting attacked by Colonnade. If I'm not getting attacked by Colonnade this turn, I don't really like it. It's worse, because like that's the baseline. Anything that's not that is actually worse for me. I guess I'm just going to take 9 here, if that happens. But then I'm going to... Oh, I'm not getting attacked. All right. And I also could get a creature on upkeep that's pretty good, but let's see what Slacks does. I could be losing my Fauna Shaman here. Fracture Identity on Grief. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Gonna take Parallax Wave here for sure. That makes sense why you would also take the Recurring Nightmare earlier. If you don't take Parallax Wave, you are getting greedy. Obviously, well, obviously you don't know what I'm going to be able to Titania for. All right, upkeep. Yeah, I think I upkeep just tight. Discard this. I'm at six. I'm taking seven in the air plus a lot more. I uh, guess I'm just going to get Charming Scoundrel. I don't know. Sylvan. There's my white source into Gristle Brand and die. All right. Let's see here. Mm. Nissa could actually be kind of good here. He's got a lot of random artifacts. Yeah, maybe over makeshift mannequin. I think I'd rather have a slightly more reliable card. There's also Questing Beast, which is pretty good against... Oh, uh, that's pretty good against Minskin Boo. What would I cut for Questing Beast, though? Hmm, I guess nothing. All right, I'm on the play here. Uh, all right, I'm going to keep this hand. The Emrakul is really not great. 
but if I can just go Lingering Souls, and then if I basically can play a turn four Blossoming Tortoise, then I'd be pretty happy because then I get to set up a turn five on Burial Rites on something, and I can't even reshuffle because Emrakul's in hand, so. Survival would also be a pretty nice draw. Okay, need another green. Another green to have a decent play here. Talisman, sure. Oh no, I'm draw I've drawn all lands, but not forests. So it's like the worst of all worlds, where I'm like I'm drawing bricks, but also not ones that help me cast the tortoise. Okay, I really need to draw crucible. Okay, green source or a playable spell that's good. Either would be okay. Um, yeah, I don't hate parallax wave, but I think I just do this instead. I guess I actually could have just played the tapped blood crypt this turn, but whatever. Uh, Blossoming Tortoise that turn would have been a lot stronger. Hopefully he doesn't have some sort of strip mine action. No. Hopefully this is a play that lines up well against, or Parallax Wave lines up well against. Walking Ballista for three. Yeah, it's fine. That I allow. All right. Forest. Uh, well, the good news is uh, I can play Blossoming Tortoise and maybe Shallow Grave once I get another green, if I, if, if I do ever find one. And this basically trades the Ballista for all my creatures. I don't really need to use the Parallax Wave right here, though. All right, so what am I looking for here? A green source would probably be the best to start with. Uh, a survival of the fittest would be okay. I'm just gonna take one, I don't really care. Mm. Another spell that's decent could be okay. All right, I guess I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, better than better than bricking. A lot worse than just a green source, but I guess we'll just say go. Put a counter on the ballista. All right, now parallax wave it out in that case. I traded taking one for him taking an additional one. Yeah, that worked out fine for me. Pass the turn. The Crucible over there not really doing much. I wonder if he has Zern or Fast Bond. It would make sense. Didn't do anything last turn. It's kind of wild. <laughs> Hanger back for zero. Uh, am I getting like brain freezed out here? Breach, brain freeze. Oh, brain freeze. Okay. Oh man, the sick part too is I have Emrakul in my hand, so I can't... Oh, is he brain freezing to hit a land? If I get brain freezed out with Emrakul in my hand, it's going to be so annoying. <laughs> All right, it doesn't seem that that's happening yet. Let's get snow-covered forest. Okay, drawing a Charming Scoundrel would be really nice. Uh, let's play the land first in case I, so I don't get like mana leaked or something. All right, Blossoming Tortoise, please. Mm -hmm. What's this? Hardcast Force of Will, okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll Shallow Grave the Tortoise. So I have one burial rights in hand anyway. Mill for three. <laughs> Didn't mill a land, sure. Uh, all right, attack, mill for three. Somehow didn't mill. Oh no, I put a blessed. It was only one land, okay. Oof. I was gonna be kind of tilted. All right, and then let's just parallax wave the tortoise here and pass the turn. All right. 
milled well, milled a bunch of the cards that I could use to get Emrakul back in my graveyard, unfortunately. Hopefully he just plays a time twister here, like an Echo of Eons or something, to get Emrakul back. That would be one way to do it. Though I don't really know. It looks like he's on a Breach deck, for sure. He's like, oh, Hardcast, Lorien Revealed, sure. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to Unburial Rites. So the land comes to play tapped. Yeah, I'm actually going to end of turn Parallax Wave the Spirit Token. That's fine. Untap Parallax Wave comes in. Get this Blossoming Tortoise. I'll put Forest into play. There's Titania. That's interesting. <sighs> mm hmm. -hmm. So I could unburial rights. I can't unburial rights and flashback. I could unburial rights the charming scoundrel to discard Emrakul and to get Emrakul into my deck, but I don't know that that's even that good of a play. I could flashback Timeless Dragon. I could just play Titania. I guess. I guess I like playing Titania, getting back Scalding Tarn. Do I have a land to get? I have Badlands, Blood Crypt in play, Mountain. Hold on. Mount oh, I have Zeotor's Proving Ground. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, and then this just puts a lot of threats into play effectively. Okay, get Scalding Tarn. All right. And I think that's all I do here. I just pass, and then I have tons of lethal cards. I mean, I guess I could crack. Is it worth cracking Silent Clearing to draw a card? Because if I draw Grief, I would, pro I would probably play it. Yeah. Oh, it costs one less because of Blossoming Tortoise. Funny. Noble Herrick. All right, I'll just pass then. I don't really need to play that. All right. Guess I hope I don't lose this turn. I don't know. Cycle Catcher at I'm sure. <laughs> it is going to be annoying if I get breached out with Emrakul in hand, but what am I going to do? I don't think it made sense to just... Unburial rights Charming Scoundrel and basically discard everything I have in play because then I just lose to Crucible playing random lands and Celestial Colonnade. This at least puts lethal into play. Not that my deck has had a great showing. Like, And if he has to cast a draw seven on the way, then I, that all, every single draw seven gets Emrakul back in my deck, whether it's Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, Sail, uh, I guess Sail to the West, my teammate has, but... We know he's got Echo Vions, for example. If he casts Echo Vions, then Emrakul's back in there. <laughs> and I've got... I don't even really need lands to hit with those. Like, obviously, it's fine to draw lands, but or to have lands from them, but just sacking them triggers Titania here. But yeah, game one, Jesse never played a second land. In this game, we've both done so much nothing. I guess I Parallax waved for a little while, but... And that kind of traded for Ballista and Hangar back. But other than that, yeah. Well, I'm not just dead, or he would have probably done that. He also knows I have Emrakul in hand from the Gataxian Probe. So he's not going to cast a draw seven if he doesn't have to. He doesn't know about Shieldred in the deck. 19. Yeah, I'm not feeling like this is too bad of a spot. Feels like if I just cast a turn four Blossoming Tortoise, this game would have been pretty easy, but instead it was like a turn six Blossoming Tortoise. <laughs> it was kind of pathetic. Mm -hmm. This is four mana and just running Coveted Jewel. Didn't see any way to cast cheap it out or to cheat it out. Fracture Identity on Titania. All right, that, that is fine. Make a token. 
get the swamp. And then this, make a token. Get the proving ground. Okay. All right. You, you get Titania. You don't have a fetch land. You can get a snow covered forest into play. I guess this isn't lethal right now. No, it, it is lethal. Two blockers makes this not lethal. Mana Crypt? Okay. Mm, gonna need something good here. Hopefully not. Oh, it's Time Twister? Nice. Don't draw Emrakul. Don't draw Emrakul. Didn't draw Emrakul. And pretty nice hand here. I can just cast Nissa and Overrun, I guess, is my, like, failure condition. Can I do that? I can also Demonic Tutor for Grief and then hard cast Nissa for green, 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 green. <laughs> you could wasteland and you but we both you make a creature. I guess that's not bad. That does leave me uh, sure. That does leave me one short of the DT. No, I don't. I'm not one short. I can go DT for grief, pitch on burial rights, grief you, cast Nissa for seven, and then minus seven it to give them all my creatures plus four, plus four, and trample. That is more than enough and beats a force of will. So Jesse's going to have to have two counter spells in hand or like a bunch of removal, but I don't think even... At plus four, plus four, I think even two of them are lethal. So this is going to be pretty hard. You can't brain freeze me out because I have Emrakul in deck, which is nice. All right, draw. Oh, I could get Vendillion clicked. That is something that could happen. Demonic Tutor. I'm going to get Grief. Grief, Exile, and Burial Rites. Yeah, you know, if if he clicks in response, then I get to attack. He takes eight, and then I cast Shieldred. So that's not too bad. Memory Lapse? Sure. Cast Nissa. You have to have Force of Will here. Nope. Minus seven. And there we go. Whew. Not the finest showing, but we got the dub, so I'll take it. All right, on to round two. <laughs> Look at this hand. <laughs> what a deck. All right, playing against Mac, who's on red-white aggro, which that might not be so bad for me. We'll see what my opener is. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand... I'm going to lead on Thraven. I'm not going to grief quite yet because I want to see if I can draw another black card to go grief, pitch it to grief and then mannequin on four. And waiting a turn gives me two draw steps because I get to crack the clue also. So I think that that's, that's decent here. And... Mac, I don't know what Mac's up to. The, the, really, the, the biggest downside of not doing grief on turn one here is if Mac plays a one drop or a piece of power. So that's that's the main thing I have to worry about. But so far that has not happened. I mean, we'll see. Mac is kind of tanking here. <laughs> so far things are looking, yeah, we'll see this game. Pretty lot, what I draw is gonna change this a lot. My opening hand was a little empty of stuff. Uh, yeah, I kind of don't want to just fire off grief here. I don't know. I can also, because I drew the windswept teeth, I can just cast it in two turns. I think that that's fine. It's not like I'm putting Mac under a lot of pressure, though Titania on five is going to be kind of nice. Lotus Petal into Ranger Captain of Eos. All right, sure. What would my best draw be here? K command is not terrible, getting Mother of Runes. <laughs> I can't cast it this turn, but it's okay. What I'll do is I'll do this and pass and probably go K command, get Zeotor's Proving Ground end of turn, because this this has to be tapped to get black anyway. Oh no, I have Scrubland. I guess I could could have gotten that. But I'll get cake, I'll get black, red, green end of turn, which is good because I want the second green for Titania. And then next turn I can either K 
K command or potentially double grief. It'll depend a little on what you play. Oh, Stoneforge Mystic. You can't get Cauldra complete. He got nothing. <laughs> Funny. All right. Uh, let's get Proving Ground. I kind of would like to just draw a random black card. Oh, that, that actually qualifies quite nicely. So let's go Grief, Exiling Shallow Grave. This will help me to decide what to do. Armageddon, Anduril. <sighs> I don't really want Geddon to happen. I don't really want Anduril to happen. I can't wait on K Command. Unless I don't care about Mother of Runes. So what are my options here? I guess what I could do... So I've got a couple plays. One is I could Grief, Skyclave, and then go Makeshift Mannequin, Grief, Anduril. And then, but then Mac Geddens. I don't really like that. Maybe I don't care about the Skyclave. Do I let Mother of Runes live? I guess I have to if I'm doing that. But I think if I'm going to Titania next turn... Because what I could also do is I could... Because the problem is if I grief Anduril and then K-Command make you discard a card and kill Mother of Runes, I don't have a grief in play. Mac could discard Skyclave and then go Sunbake Canyon Geddon, and it's Stoneforge Mystic plus Ranger Captain versus Thraben Inspector. And... I have no lands that I really don't want to get Geddon here. It feels like that would be bad. I could go grief Geddon. Yeah, I think I'm going to grief the Geddon and then K command blow up the mother of runes. Make you disc. No, but then, then I get Anderald. I keep coming back to that. I could just double, double grief. I think what I'm going to do is grief the Geddon. And let the Mother of Runes live. And then have to battle through it. Yeah, I guess that's what I'll do. And pass the turn, I think. The Anduril is actually not that bad because I can just blow that up with K Command. Or I can mannequin the Grief. You know, either one of those things works pretty nicely. Okay, drew a planes. And then now, in response, I mannequin grief here. And then make you discard Anduril. And that's what kind of what I was hoping to happen. It wastes <clears throat> it wastes Max turn pretty nicely. Grief you. And you discard Anduril, Flame of the West, and then now you can't put anything into play, and you have a Skyclave in hand that you can't cast this turn. And then you can't even attack with Ranger Captain. Well, you can, but if you do, I'll block with Grief, and then kill the Mother of Runes. Because this gives me the opening I need to kill Mother of Runes. Okay, fair enough. And then now, two cards in hand. Oh, that was actually not even a bad draw. Let's go K command. Target player discards a card, deal two damage to any target. You discard and I'll kill Mother of Runes. I think that given that Max Hand is Skyclave and then a land that cycles, just getting rid of a card there is better than getting a Grief back because I'm not playing Grief the next couple turns. Discarded Sunbay Canyon. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Because now we get to place Thraben or Skura Tribe Elder hit with Thraben. And you have a Skyclave Apparition in hand, which does nothing against my board. Yeah, this, this, the whole grief in response to Stoneforge play, that was a good play. I'll pat myself on the back there. Oh, I guess I didn't really need to attack for one, actually. But this is fine. Let's get a snow-covered forest here. And you drew Recruiter. Ah, that's pretty annoying. Okay. Getting Figure of Destiny. Yeah. 
I mean, that's pretty good. I, I think I'm still in decent shape here. Would have been nice to draw anything but a land, honestly. But getting back Windswept Teeth and then using Windswept Teeth Silent Clearing to make two five fives or two five threes seems pretty good to me. Let's just pass. And I get to draw an extra card off the, the Silent Clearing too. So still feel pretty good about this, but obviously... Recruiter into figure was an unfortunate top deck. Okay, drew a land. Now I'm worried about the six mana ability on figure of destiny. It's going to turn into an 8-8 eight, eight flying first strike. Yeah, man, what a good draw. Let's see if I can find some answers pretty soon here. Scrub land. Crack this to draw a card. All right, action. Oh, recurring nightmare. That's not bad. Let's... Send in some idiots. Basically, if Mac misses on drawing a land for one turn, I feel pretty good about this situation. I really don't want Ranger Captain to get sacrificed here, but I don't kind of don't think Mac's going to do that. I don't know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, now I play Recurring Nightmare. Get back Titania, Sax Thraben Inspector. Get back Silent Clearing. Sack this to draw a card. Get a 5-3. Oh, Demonic Tutor. I'm at 13. Yeah, I can just now Recurring Nightmare. Recurring Nightmare back. Grief, Sacking Titania. Get your Skyclave, play a land. Now I've pretty much got things under control. Like Figure of Destiny can get leveled up here and it doesn't matter anymore. And Max got no more equipment to get with Stoneforge because had Andrew in hand and got nothing. So, And then DT for Parallax Wave next turn is probably going to be the play. Assuming Max doesn't just concede. All right. Whew, worked out. That... Was looking a little dicey for a second when the figure showed up, but Recurring Nightmare in this position was pretty good. And, I mean, there's an argument for getting, I should have gotten Grief first and then sat Grief to get Titania. Would have been basically the same, except this would just be a Titania instead. But I don't mind this position. And I've got quite the squad... This puts you to five, so you have to block those three things. And that's, of course, not really counting the fact that I had you Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor is going to be more than enough here. Let's see what... Uh, Mac must have drawn something pretty good to to look like you've got outs. What it could it be? Palace Jailer? No. I think Palace Jailer, he would have gone for that instead of Figure of Destiny. All right. On Thin Ice seems like it's probably good. I have enough. I do have enough basics, I think, that I can I can get there. Uh, I don't think I want Nyssa. Cake Command is good. Lingering Souls is good. Shieldred's good. Makeshift Mannequin might not actually be the card I want. It was good that game. It's also possible Loam is... Maybe I don't have time for that. Yeah, maybe... No, but Loam is pretty good against Armageddon, which is kind of nice. And maybe I will just take out Makeshift Mannequin. All right. On the draw here... Let's see what we've got. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I keep this. I can DT and cast like a K command on turn three, maybe. I mean, this draw is a little slow. Sakura Tribelder would be a pretty nice pickup. What else would I want to see out of this draw? I don't know. Shallow Grave, huh? I could DT for survival. That actually is a pretty nice plan. Kind of depends a little on what he's doing, but yeah, look, I, I go Adeline Cheese. Okay. Turn two Adeline is not going to give me a lot of time and is going to make the DTing for survival plan a lot worse because survivaling out uh, an Emrakul attack with Shallow Grave is just not going to cut it. All right, let's just place a Kura Tribe Elder. Not that I think I'm going to beat <clears throat> a turn two Adeline. Turn one, one drop, turn two Adeline is pretty rough, but. I think Sakura Tribe Elder gives me my best chance of that. Block. Crack this. Oh, you're going to pump figure, sure. Crack this to get planes. 
I guess I can DT for on thin ice, and I guess I kind of have to though. You know what, I'm just gonna play a Blossoming Tortoise and then see what's up. Okay, put an Arid Mesa into play and I bend Grief and Parallax Wave. Skyclave, jeez, okay. Wish I had a Wrath, because now I'm at three. Yeah, Emrakul wouldn't even do it. Uh, Shieldred doesn't do anything. If I had Parallax Wave in my deck still, I could DT and play Parallax Wave and then knock out one, two, three, four, five for a turn. Don't have Damnation. Do I have anything that can do anything here? No, it does not appear so. All right, well, that was that. Yeah, that was a pretty... Three, I can play Shieldred, I can Shallow Grave the Grief, block, block, and I still die. Oh, can I DT for something to kill Skyclave and then also Shallow Grave? Like, I guess I could Unthin Ice the Skyclave, I get a 4-4, four, four. Shallow Grave the Grief, block, and I still go to negative one. All right. Yeah, that was just too fast for me. Uh, do I want like Nyssa, Concealing Curtains, Chandra? as a way to kill something. Chandra's kind of slow, I don't think so. <clears throat> I just need to do that, but be on the play. If I was on the play of that game, let's see, I go turn two DT for survival, plays Adelaide, attacks me, next turn I go land, survival, go, go get Emrakul, next turn Emrakul, shallow grave, and he's got three, four, five, six, seven, he goes to one permanent play, just an Adeline. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, I'm on the play this turn. And yeah, I like this hand. <coughs> Once again, Sakura Tribe Elder would be excellent. This deck's just slow is the, is the biggest problem. I am going to play a turn two Dothy Voidwalker here, which I think is nice. Uh, that definitely makes me want to play a Voidwalker over Life from the Loam. I can loam back and pay for Esper Sentinel next turn. Yeah, I would really just prefer to draw Sakura Tribe Elder or Charming Scoundrel to make a treasure. Because if I can play a Titania on turn four, I'll feel pretty good about it, but Shielded on four is also not bad. Okay. Let's crack this. Let's get Snow-Covered Forest, I guess. Loam back Windswept Heath. Pay one. And send with Dothy Voidwalker. And then I'll play Shieldred and Shieldred on four. Probably get uh, Skyclaved because they always have it. <laughs> and then Titania on five. I'm not dredging loam. Planes. All right. Don't have an answer for Shieldred. I like my spot. Do have an answer for Shieldred. I'm probably dead. Parallax Wave would also be a fantastic draw here. Scrapwork Mutt. Okay, I, I do like that as a start. Discarded Mountain. Okay. Attack with everything here. Yeah, I'm going to happily block Adeline here. And I don't really want to take a million damage. And this lets me a uh, Dothy Voidwalker to Adeline into play on my side. Uh, I am not going to dredge. Sack this. Cast Adeline. Guess I have to take two going down to six to play Titania here. And then crack this, go to five. Get my last land and play Noble. 
All right. I mean, now I've got a good squad. Obviously, there's plenty of cards I lose to from this position. Anduril would be pretty annoying if he had enough mana to play and equip it. Um, removal still pretty good here. The figure of destiny is going to build up towards uh, getting large. I'm not going to dredge loam. I'm just going to draw, and if I draw Parallax Wave, I just win. Demonic Tutor, I just win. If I draw Recurring Nightmare, is probably pretty good. We'll have to see. Because currently I've got blockers for everything. I, one thing gets through, but the attack is disastrous for Max. So let's see what you got. Archangel Elspeth. Okay. Make that into a 4-4 flyer. Put me to 1. All right. Well, I guess it's Parallax Wave or Bust here. Or DT. It's not going to do it. And this minus 2. I could attack that with a bunch of tokens. Yeah, I'm going to lose, though. I mean, these just all get blocked no matter what. And hopefully uh, the token got through or something. I don't know. Yep, close game. We both had pretty good draws. I mean, I went my, my first couple turns were not go very board interactive. I went turn two Voidwalker, turn three Loam. That's just not that much on the board. But playing Shieldred into Titania was pretty good. But just like I said, I needed to play Titania a turn earlier. I needed to draw, because if I had drawn Sakura Tribelder as my like two or three drop, and then had a turn four Titania, I would have a ton more life, and I wouldn't just die to this. But, you know, that is is how it is. All right, yeah, you, I don't need you to think this much. All right, let's see if we can pull out the 2-1 with a deck that I don't think was very good, so I'd be happy with the 2-1. All right, time for round three. Let's see if we can get across the finish line here. And yeah, this is a solid hand. Playing against a Tularean Academy deck, which this hand does go turn two, cycle, timeless dragon to get... Uh, we'll see which land. Probably Zeotor's Proving Ground, though that's a little slow. Ooh, don't like this. Oh man, that could be bad. Uh... Yeah, that was bad. Now I can't cast any of my spells. Though if I draw a green or a red, I'm in pretty good shape. But I didn't. Turn one him. That's not ideal. Let's hope uh, Alarmobot, that's I guess Wombat's magic online name, doesn't have a super fast draw. Windswept Teeth would be perfect. A red source would be pretty nice too. Oh. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Turn on him into the full academy draw is like a pretty impressive start. Just having double black on turn one, then immediately like, all right, now I have three artifacts for academy. I am uh, a little outmatched here. Had I been able to cast these spells, I guess maybe I would have a shot, but yeah, all right, we're, we're done here. Yeah, we're not doing anything. Um, yeah, I guess I do want Nyssa in general. I think I'll keep the Parallax Wave. I think I'll still take out the Mannequin. And I think that's where we're at, sure. Maybe I should have sided in City of Traitors against Mac. Hmm. I'm looking at that now and wondering. It's pretty awkward to play City of Traitors in a four-color deck, but maybe against White Weenie it would have been worth doing. I don't know. I don't think I want it here, but... All right. Yeah, maybe I should have just taken out Loam for City of Traders. Hmm. Who knows? Here, let's see if we can uh, cast spells this game. I mean, him just completely stripped strip me of my ability to cast spells by taking Timeless Dragon. That was going to get probably Proving Ground, but I guess it could have also gotten... Oh, no, I can't get Proving Ground, duh. It would probably get Temple Garden. Uh, and then I could have cast Sylvan and whatnot, or Loam, but... All right, I'm on the play. Sure, I'll keep this hand. Turn four Nyssa is pretty good. And obviously I need to draw a little bit of action here, but if I do, then 
this hand can get there. Yeah, of course we can draw land immediately. That's how could it be any other way? Um, I guess we'll get forest here. It's probably fine. Are I getting hemmed again? No talisman. Grief. Grief would be a draw here. Uh, let's get forest. Do I cycle the proving ground? I guess I have noble hierarch. So maybe I, I draw into that. Okay, play a tapped land. And then next turn I'm going to go Nissa. I guess Nissa pop your currency converter, depending on what Alarma bot does. This, this takes two turns to kind of get going. So there's a chance I might just kill the talisman. But if this has a card under it, if, if they've got mana up, then it's pretty bad to, to kill that and then get hit by Nissa hit by a 2-2. Chrome host seed shark into no land. Well, not me. I've got plenty of land. Um, wow. So if I play Nissa for five mana, it'll have three loyalty. If I minus one, it, it, it just won't work. If I wait a turn, I get two more loyalty. Or I could play it and go up to four loyalty. Yeah, that's probably the play. I've drawn a Fauna Shaman in the rest in three lands so far. Not ideal. Uh, yeah, I'll just make a make a dork. All right. Don't just slam Academy here, please. <laughs> that would be bad. Let's see. What am I hoping to draw? Parallax Wave would always be good. Wouldn't mind a removal spell. I guess I don't have much in the way of like removal, removal. DT would, of course, be okay. Not sure. Okay, we drew a land. We're casting Trinket Mage for a Mox. Yep. And you can play the Mox. It's a 0-0 zero, zero token at least. And a Copter that makes a token. Okay. And attacks my Nissa. All right. Okay, I need to draw a spell here. Mm-hmm. Okay, Titania is not bad. Let's attack with the token. And what am I going to do? I think I'm just going to minus one to kill. I could make a 3-3 three, three, or I could just kill Smuggler's Copter. Let's just kill Smuggler's Copter. It's also really good with Currency Converter. I don't really want to deal with that. Let's go Titania. Hmm. Bloodstained Mire has Scrubland and Mountain. No, Mountains in Hand. This has Scrubland and Forest and Plains. All right, so let's go Windswept Heath. Crack it. Snow Covered Forest. Titania. I want to be able to cast the Fauna Shaman this turn, so I'm going to do this. I think this works out the best. Crack, and then, then if I draw a creature next turn, I can use Fauna Shaman, which is nice. And I'll get Scrubland here and play Fauna Shaman. All right. <sighs> Things could be worse. I have a Bloodstained Mire in hand as well. So next turn, that's another 5-3. The, the Seed Shark is going to kill the Nissa, but it made a 4-4 and uh, absorbed two points of damage and then blew up a Copter, though it did cost me four life. So net minus two. Chupacabra on Titania, sure. I'm actually very close to casting Gristlebear. <laughs> if I draw a, if I draw a creature, I could just do that. Not this turn, but next turn. Bloodstained Mart has nothing I can get, I don't think. But I have enough black and enough mana total to cast Gristlebrand if I draw it. Oh, Thraben Inspector. Well, that's probably not as good as just using Fauna Shaman. <laughs> so I could get Gristlebrand that I could cast next turn. I could just cast Shieldred. Feels like casting Shieldred is probably pretty good. So let's just do that. 
I'm going to attack first with these things. One mana short of casting Gristlebeezy. I just don't think waiting two turns with all this stuff going on is as good as just casting Shieldred, which is going to already make Currency Converter a lot worse, makes any potential draw sevens worse, puts a little bit of pressure on you. All right, we're going to flip. We're going to Fatal Push. Huh, you know Shieldred's coming too. Interesting. All right, and you're going to take four. All right, well, let's play Shieldred. And pass the turn. Lose two life, did down to ten. A creature next turn. I really don't have a single land left to get, do I? Tarn is gone, Blood Crypt, Badlands. One swamp, one mountain, yeah. Kaito Dancing Shadow. All right. Oh, I see. We're going to make this can't block, attack, and bounce Chupacabra. I can't cast it this turn, though. All right. Drawing a creature next turn would be great. I could also get Blossoming Tortoise and hope to get... Oh, his Dark Ritual to cast it. All right. Sure, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's draw something here, shall we? Draw Shallow Grave. Um, does that do anything for me? It really doesn't. Like I could Shallow Grave Shield, but it doesn't get, I don't get any value from that. Let's just pass, I'm probably gonna lose here. Need to draw. I mean, Recurring Nightmare would be pretty great. Um, drawing a creature to maybe set up like an Emrakul attack. I might have a little bit of time for that. I don't have much. I'm getting attacked pretty hard here. I guess I have to block this turn. Yeah, I'll block here. Maybe at some point I could... Uh, Shallow Grave the Fauna Shaman and do something with that? What got bounced there? Is that Trinket Mage? I think so. We drew Gaunty? I was already losing. You don't need to draw extra cards that are good. <laughs> At this point, even uh, Parallax Wave wouldn't do it, though that there was a time when that would have been pretty good. Okay, and then now I'm dead to those drones dying. On burial rights. A little late on that, unfortunately. Um, the fact that these things just both attack and kill me makes it pretty hard to imagine how I'm winning. I guess I can unburial rights three of an inspector. Draw a card. Yeah. <laughs> and crack a clue. Oh, we somehow didn't get there. All right, well, unfortunately, that'll do it. This deck just was not good. It, I opened poorly, and I think I was kind of in the right seat in terms of, like, getting a bunch of red-black cards late, but then just it didn't really pan out. And I don't know. There was some cool stuff going on with this deck, but it was just way too slow. That was the, the main part. And, you know, he had a game where he got hemmed and couldn't cast a spell. Like, th those things happened. Just ended up being a little too slow against my, the White Weenie deck and uh, had a just a non-game against Academy and then lost another game against Academy where we both did stuff and my deck kind of flooded out. Though I did keep a five-line hand, so kind of how it goes. All right, well, that'll do it. Tomorrow we've got another awesome draft coming and uh, maybe get a little more wins this time. Uh, as always, thanks for hanging out and watching. Sometimes the decks are bad. Sometimes they're... Great. Sometimes they're Parallax Wave, Grief, Charming, Scoundrel, Noble Hierarch decks, you know? Sometimes they're that. <laughs> I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>